from school and was planning to study at an art college in the city. However, my mother suddenly passed away. After my mother's death, my father remarried two years later, but I didn't judge him. I tried to understand and accept his decision and support him. And now, my father's new wife, Natasha, decided to give him a gift in his old age, a child right around his 50th birthday. She managed to time it perfectly. I had always dreamed of having a little sister, and it happened. There's an age difference of 18 years between us, which is quite interesting because I am already an independent adult, and now there's a baby. I perceived my sister more like my own child and enjoyed taking care of her. Overall, I had a friendly relationship with my stepmother as well. I saw that my father was happy with his new family, so I was happy too. We named my sister Mariana, but at home, we simply called her Masha. Our family moved to a country house outside the city, while I stayed in our apartment in the city to finish college. However, every weekend, I flew home to visit my family, chat with Natasha, and spend time with my little sister. Our country house was not like most rural homes, it was a two-story wooden house in a pine forest, situated by a beautiful lake. We had outbuildings and a bathhouse. Although we had a garden, Natasha mainly grew various greens, currants, and raspberries. Several years passed, Masha grew up, and I finished my studies and started working, but I still visited my family on weekends. One day, when I came to visit them, I sensed some concern in the family. After a few words, Natasha told me that Masha had developed an imaginary friend, similar to Carlson from the cartoon. This friend appeared in her dreams almost every night, talked to her, played with her, and gave her advice. Initially, this situation worried our parents, but after consulting with a psychiatrist friend, they were reassured. He said that such things happen to children and that it will pass. As a result, they started ignoring all the talks about Masha's imaginary friend. However, Masha secretly told me that her nighttime friend advised her not to be angry with her parents and not to get upset because they are adults who no longer believe in miracles. Over time, Masha insisted that she needed a dog, not just any dog, but a big and strong one. However, she wanted to choose the dog herself. After a couple of weeks of requests and persuasion, our parents gave in. First, they searched all the nearby summer cottages in search of a puppy, and then the whole family went to the city by car to visit the bird market. However, the purchase didn't go smoothly. Masha rejected all the dogs at that market, from purebred puppies to mixed breeds. She kept saying that she didn't know what she wanted but that she would recognize it immediately when she saw it, the dog that was meant for her. In the end, our parents and Masha went back to the countryside, while I stayed in the city for work, as I needed to submit some reports urgently. I visited my family only after three weeks. To my surprise, when I entered the kitchen, I saw a big box near the stove, lined with old flannel blankets. And there, I saw a grey wonder. Masha happily ran up to me, her eyes shining with joy, saying, Look, Tanya, now I have a dog just like I wanted. And I no longer dream about it, which means I did everything right, I found the puppy I was looking for. I looked at my dad in astonishment. But this is not a puppy, it's a wolf cub. Where did you get it? My dad confirmed that it was indeed a wolf cub and that Masha had chosen it, saying it was the same friend she had dreamed about. We found him by chance in the forest under a mossy log. He was hiding under the roots of an old tree and whimpering loudly, making noise throughout the area. When I pulled him out from there, Masha shouted, My puppy, you finally found me. All the conversations and assurances that it was not a dog but a wolf and it should live in the forest didn't work. That's exactly the kind of dog I saw. In a dream, she told me. Daddy, she said, Daddy, do you want to abandon the little one in the forest to die? Masha asked me. And Papa shrugged his shoulders, what could I say in response? We took the little one and carried him home. Now we're raising him, we named him Dick. All evening Dick was toiling between our legs, biting everyone's ankles, thus attracting everyone's attention. He ate for three and grew not by days, 
but by ours. Masha's laughter echoed throughout the house. She was happy with her new pet, and they became best friends. In two years, Dick grew up and became a magnificent, large, and powerful animal. He lived in a spacious enclosure in the yard, which Papa built for him. Masha also grew up this year, and she was supposed to go to school. On a beautiful summer day, we decided to go for a walk in the forest to pick berries and mushrooms. I was confident in those places because I knew them well over the years, so we went alone. At first, we just walked in the forest, and then we went deeper. We saw a road that we had to cross to go further into a more secluded forest where we thought there would be plenty of mushrooms. As we crossed to the other side of the road, we saw a car parked on the shoulder. And when we entered the dense thicket, we noticed two men getting out of the car and following us into the forest. We got scared of the strangers and quickened our pace. We wanted to distance ourselves from them as quickly as possible, but the men started chasing us. I was very scared, not so much for myself but for my little sister. You can't run far with her. We looked back and saw their faces, they were looking at us and purposefully approaching. I panicked, it became clear that running deeper into the forest was futile. We needed to go back home as soon as possible. We turned towards the village, aiming to cut diagonally and get out again. I ran through the branches and shrubs, dragging a bewildered Masha behind me. The branches stung our faces. There were no paths, the forest was impenetrable. At some point, we had to stop. Masha couldn't run anymore, she was tired. We turned around and saw that the men were getting very close. I was so frightened, wondering what was going on in their minds and why they were chasing us. I didn't know what to do and prepared myself for the worst. The distance between us and our pursuers was closing in rapidly. We could already hear them talking among themselves. We grabbed some sticks and prepared to defend ourselves. But suddenly, a wolf jumped out from behind a tree. It was our dick. He stood between us and the pursuers, shielding us. The wolf bared his huge fangs, showing them that he was ready to attack the intruders at any moment. He sensed that we were in danger and escaped from his enclosure. We didn't know, but help arrived just in time. It became so calm that I stopped worrying. I knew everything would be fine. I noticed that our pursuers stopped, hesitated, and looked at us and the wolf, apparently contemplating their next move. They probably didn't realize at first that it wasn't just a dog but a dangerous predator that could destroy them in an instant. We slowly continued forward, and in a few minutes, we reached a clearing. Dick followed us from behind, escorting us all the way home. The pursuers remained in the same spot, undecided about what to do next. You see, Tanya, Dick saved us from bad people just like in my dream. That's why I chose this dog. I knew he would protect us from any harm. Sometimes we hear amazing things that happen, sometimes this story can be very amazing and incredible, and I know all of us know that news tends to make things abrupt in order to attract an audience, but at the same time there are some interesting things that are too amazing to be true. This is the story of Kathy Hathaway, a three-year-old boy who disappeared from his grandmother's home in North Carolina, and as you can imagine, it scares everyone in the family. When a child wandered alone and lost, especially in the wilderness, their chances of being alive again were slim, and after three days they found him safe and sound, and he owed his survival in the forest to a bear. In January 2019, three-year-old Kathy Hathaway played in the backyard with two other children at his grandmother's house in North Carolina. But Kathy was not with the other two children when they came in, and his parents described him as a very curious child, so they thought maybe something had aroused his interest and led him to leave to explore. When his grandmother realized that Kathy was nowhere to be found, she called the police. He is walking in the backwoods, and we can't find him. She told the 911 dispatcher that everyone else came back, but left him there, he was gone, and we couldn't find him. The search began immediately, looking for a little boy, because the coming weather was very bad. 
On the first night of Kathy's disappearance, the temperature dropped to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and no one seemed too optimistic about finding the little boy in the middle of winter. After all, the weather in North Carolina is very cold. Until day turned night or even the next day, the possibility of finding the little boy decreased. It was mid-January, and Kathy didn't wear clothes that could handle such a difficult situation. The fact that things were so bad that the search had to be cancelled, needless to say, the family soon lost hope and the chances of him being found were slim and even less likely that he was found alive. The search included helicopters and drones, canine divers and hundreds of volunteers, who were urged by authorities to stay away the next night because of bad weather. The family soon lost hope and then disappeared two nights later when rescue teams heard reports of children crying in the woods. After some searching, they finally found him. He was entangled in thorns, and rescuers had to wade across the highlands to feed the little boy with water. He was cold and wet, with a few minor abrasions, but otherwise he was not damaged, he only wanted some water and his mother. The question in everyone's mind is, what is going on? On such a rainy day, the little boy lived in the cold for two nights, with only a few scratches. After he was taken to the hospital, he was examined by a doctor who told his family that, according to Kathy, he made a friend who helped him keep warm in the woods. That friend was a black bear, and he said he stayed with a bear for two days. God sent a friend to protect him, God is a good God and miracles do happen, Aunt Anna Hathaway wrote in a Facebook post. Since then, Casey's story about the bear has made international headlines, and some debate has unfolded about whether it is possible, with some believing the story to be fantasy. But Chris Norcott a wildlife photographer who spends more time with black bears in North Carolina than others thinks the story is likely to be true, and he has even heard similar stories in the past. I've seen a lot of their behavior over the years that shows their caring and nurturing side, which is definitely possible for their own offspring and other animals, Norcott told the dodo. I don't know if that means he saw a bear, Norcott said. Sheriff Hughes said, I don't know if it means a bear raised him, or if it means something else. But perhaps in Kathy's eyes none of this mattered, and it was the black bear that gave the little boy real and effective help to keep Kathy alive when he was afraid and lonely. Everyone thinks this is a wonderful thing. Community members sent Kathy a teddy bear to congratulate him on his safe return home. I think it's a very lovely story, Sheriff Hughes said. If that's what helps kids survive, you know what, I'll take it. Naturally, the story looks pretty incredible, coming from the narrative of an imaginative three-year-old. No one can confirm or deny whether his story is true. There are many black bears in North Carolina, so it won't be difficult to meet one. Being friends with it is enough for it to snuggle up to you and keep you warm. However, we may never know. An important part of the story is a happy ending, and the story may end in tragedy. Instead, it is worth celebrating whether rescuers find Kathy alive and well, and whether he is an imaginary bear friend or not. After the incident, his mother said that everyone knew that she was grateful for his safe return. She gave a more detailed account of his situation, saying that he was fine. Obviously, he had asked to watch Netflix again. Sometimes a person will do anything for money. For money, crimes happen every day. Even close friends may quarrel endlessly if they can't share the sudden wealth. And to what extent can a husband get a share of property that doesn't even belong to him? That's exactly what we're going to tell you today. The story would have ended tragically if the most unlikely savior, the grizzly bear, hadn't intervened. But let's start the story from scratch. It happened in the northwestern U.S. state of Wyoming, where residents were shocked by news that rescuers had been searching for a missing woman for days but could not find her, who went into the forest with her husband but never returned. The husband came back from the forest alone, where he said they were separated, and then the girl disappeared, and he searched for a long time, but when he realized he could not find her, he called the police. Worried locals joined in the search, examining almost every inch of the forest but finding no trace of the girl. Until one of the searchers reported on the radio, he finally found her, but he couldn't get close to her because she was protected by the bear. 
You heard me right, she was really protected by the bear, who wouldn't let anyone near her, and the girl was alive and in good health, but there was no way to get close to her. After some time she managed to escape, and then she was immediately taken away for examination at the local hospital, where she explained what had happened to her. A few months ago, the girl discovered that after her aunt died, she would inherit a large fortune, a big house, a car, and a large sum of money. When the girl was grieving for her aunt's death, her husband decided to do it himself. For a long time, he prepared a plan for how to eliminate his suspicion and get the whole inheritance. On the appointed date, he invited his wife for a walk in the forest, and the unsuspecting girl was happy to spend the weekend in the fresh air and in the company of her beloved husband. But after they had gone a long way, the husband suddenly took out a knife and told her of his plan that she would not come out of the forest. The girl was stunned at what she heard. She did not believe it, her ears, and because of the shock she could not even resist or run away, the husband approached her slowly with a knife but at that moment the branches creaked behind him, and a huge grizzly bear came out. They were afraid, and the man ran away. He only heard the roar of animals behind him. He thought the bear would do all the dirty work for him, and he waited for a moment, then called the police, and he did not consider one thing, that the bear would not attack his wife at all. The fact is that seven years ago, when they did not know each other, the girl and her grandfather saved a little bear in the forest, and they took care of him, and then released him back into the wild. However, the bear did not forget his rescuer and recognized her. Realizing that she was in danger, he ran to help her. The husband knew nothing about the bear, for the wife had never thought of telling him the story. After her husband ran away, the bear apparently decided to take care of the girl himself, and he took her to his own nest, and pushed her in with his nose, and it was soft and warm, and the bear himself did not crawl into the nest, and he went round in circles, and drove away anyone and anything that appeared nearby, and he brought berries and nuts to the girl, but did not let her leave the nest, and was very concerned about her. As people approached the nest, he continued to guard his rescuer and not let others stay in it for a long time. The girl realized that the bear would not hurt her, but she feared that he would attack others while protecting her. So she did not go out for a long time, and managed to leave without offending her protector, and at last she decided to slip away quietly, and then ran quickly to the crowd. They put her on a stretcher and took her to the hospital. She was severely dehydrated because although bears often brought her food, there was still no water in the cave. When her husband found out that his wife had been found, he tried to flee the state, but was detained and arrested at the border. Instead of receiving a rich inheritance, he was imprisoned for several years and charged with attempted murder and harming his wife. The girl recovered quickly and returned home, and from then on she often went to the forest and brought food to her terrible rescuer, always thanking him, and it was because of him she was still alive that the friend was really good and always gave a hundred times in return. The girl rescued a cub from the inevitable death, and then he repaid her with the same behavior. If the grizzly bear hadn't intervened, who knows how the story would have ended, maybe the husband could have escaped his crime. Let's be friendly to each other and help others, and then at the right time, your kindness will be rewarded. The most important thing is- Guys, have you ever seen an animal ask people for help? People often rescue animals, but how often do they actually rescue animals and how did they make it? This program will tell about the amazing events of animals that people were lucky enough to catch in the video. What would you do when you're traveling on a ship in the sea and suddenly see a huge shark catching a turtle? Maybe you will pick up your phone and start filming. However, the protagonist of this video decides to help the turtle when it's struggling. After the shark rests, it lags behind its prey. These guys dragged the turtle to the ship and stayed with it for a while. It's enough for the turtle to regain its strength and move on. In the next scene, a man removes a fishing net from a huge whale. When the whale swam to the ship, it seemed to know where it should seek help. Not everyone will rescue such a huge animal from the net. However, a man rescued this whale. Although he failed the first time, he made it in the end. 
In this video, a kind man pours water from a bottle to the eagle. Drivers found the eagle on the highway. It was not afraid of people at all. It drinks a lot of water and gets to know all the people. Many people love squirrels because they are cute. However, their lifespan is short. According to statistics, 75% to 80% of squirrels die before the age of one year. The squirrel got tangled in the fishing line. It lay helpless on the ground and begged for help. Two people found it. They released the little squirrel with scissors and then it became very attached to them. When they first tried to release to it, it didn't leave. However, it disappeared sometimes and came back to the pocket of its benefactor. The men decided to take the squirrel home. They built a cage with wheels and set up an obstacle course for it. Squirrels lived with them until the next spring. A puppy was entangled in the tent. It barked loudly for help. Suddenly a policeman walked up to it and grabbed the cloth. It's hard but the man managed to tear down the tent and free the poor puppy. The puppy immediately stood up and hugged him. A man found a hungry wolf. He fed it without hesitation. The wolf didn't seem to be afraid of the man, just seeing how close it got to him. The wolves are very smart. They can connect and Eve trust human beings. After saying goodbye, the driver wanted to leave but the wolf blocked his way. The man was out of bacon, so he gave the wolf bread. The wolf chased him for several minutes because it was grateful or because it was still hungry and wanted more food. The bear cub was accidentally trapped. It's painful and scary. People went to help it. Finally the bear was free and found its mother. It looked like its mom. Now the rescue team is helping a cow. Its head got stuck in a tree. That's not the only reason for its inability to move. It may be attacked by bulls. They're held back by the water from the water gun. People had to remove the branches before saving it. A thirsty leopard searched for water in the Peshi Desert in Rajasthan, India. Its head was stuck in the jar. At this time people found it. Surprisingly, the leopard did not panic nor try to escape. It waited patiently to be rescued. Rescuers managed to free the leopard after injecting it with a sedative. This man climbed onto a street lamp and rescued a pigeon trapped in it. Four killer whales were stranded on the ice. And two of which were nearly inaccessible. The ice was approaching them and they had to call for help. It's important for rescuers, divers and volunteers to move the ice so whales won't be poked by the ice. People splashed water on them frequently, but every now and then they move their bodies. Which may cause them to suffocate. Therefore, the rescue team decided to establish a connection with them. People talked to killer whales to encourage and comfort them. This footage shows an injured animal which is 6 meters long calmly performing its task. People's commands do not show any aggression towards them. It allows rescuers to do whatever is necessary. The veterinarian found that this whale soon caught up with other killer whales. Joshua Lees, a diver, found a lemon shark underwater. It swam around and elbowed the man as if saying something was wrong. He found there's something in its stomach. It was a big and rusty hook. It took him a lot of effort to get it off. Shark's wound healed quickly. The defenseless shark was entangled in a rope. It calmly waited for the man to cut the rope. Now the shark can swim away, but no one can guarantee that it will not get into trouble again. Whale sharks are rare. The number of whale sharks has been slowly declining in recent years due to illegal hunting. Now a fisherman is taking the shell off a poor turtle. Its entire body is covered with the shell, 
including its back, belly, and head. These uninvited guests are acquaintances of the turtles. Crustaceans use sea turtles as their substrate. The turtle shell needs to stay in the water flow. If there are too many shells there, they will get tumors or infections. An American condor named Betty was dying when it's found. The upper part of its beak is almost missing. The experts decided to help it. They created its information throughout the paper for the first time. The eagle's beak is uneven. It has cavities and consists of different fragments. It took several months to make this 3D prosthesis. They spent hours attaching the printed nylon beak. This is a happy ending. Betty can drink water as soon as it gets back to Avery. A great white shark attacked. Todd Andrews, a surfer, in the Pacific Ocean. His back and right leg were injured. Some common bottlenose dolphins surrounded and protected him. Rescuers and victims managed to reach the shore. They provided Todd with medical assistance. According to Todd, without the help of the dolphins, the shark would have ripped him to pieces. People and animals should live in harmony and help each other. It's really beautiful. Of course that's not always the case. Let's hope our world gets better. Guys, that's it for this video. Let us know what you think of this video in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.